yeah, everything is clear. Okay. All right, so it's very much my pleasure to um, introduce the speaker for today. So, um, Seongjin uh, Kim uh, from Olson National Institute of Science and Technology. Um, uh, so he um, uh, graduated um, from KAIST uh, uh, in Korea, uh, has taken several positions, including in industry or the SAIT, Samsung Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. um, also started a, um, a, a company, right? Yes. It's, um, yes. Uh, it's a clear view, right? Mm -hmm. it, um, uh, doing a lot of great work, uh, both in uh, image sensors and advanced uh, time of flight image sensors, as well as biomedical uh, integrated uh, circuits and systems. And today we'll hear his great work he's doing. As, as you mentioned, he's also here in sabbatical. So uh, those of you who are here at the UCSD, you can also benefit from having him here and, and some uh, uh, several more discussions we can have over the next uh, several more months that we have here. Uh, and uh, so it will give us some exciting uh, story today about a CMOS microelectrode um, micro array system with reconfigurable separate multiplexing architecture. Please, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for a nice introduction. Well, I'm uh, Sang Jin Kim, and I'm very grateful to be here for introducing my research. Well, the title of this seminar is uh, CMOS microelectrode array system. Um, with reconfigurable subarray uh, multiplex architecture. Well, although the GERD uh, introduced me nicely, but, uh, let me just uh, uh, introduce myself briefly. Okay? So I received a BS degree in post tech and MS and PhD degree in KAIST, uh, both are uh, in majoring in the electrical engineering. And both the post tech and KAIST are uh, most prestigious schools in the engineer school. Uh, and top three in South Korea. Well, after well, graduation, uh, I joined the uh, Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology, uh, which is the central institute, uh, research institute of the Samsung Electronics. I worked there for uh, four and a half years. And uh, between the, two, the 2012 and 2015, uh, I worked for the Institute of Microelectronics, ASTAR, in Singapore. In 2015, uh, I joined the uh, UNEST, and now I'm served as an uh, associate professor. I also co-founded the uh, SolidView, uh, which is the uh, LiDAR startup, well, the developed uh, LiDAR sensors in South Korea. And now I'm the, uh, served as a chief scientist here. Well, maybe, okay. Well, my research is mainly developed the uh, various sensor interface uh, based on the uh, analog mixed mode integrated circuit design. And uh, it includes the two main uh, topics, uh, CMOS image sensors and the uh, biomedical interface circuits. The so CMOS image sensor include the 3D image sensor for uh, human uh, computer interaction and ride the sensors for self-driving car, a fingerprint recognition SOC for security uh, system and the tactile sensor for realizing the artificial skin. And the another topic, the biomedical uh, interface uh, circuit and systems uh, includes the neural recording IC and DNA quantification IC and a, a cell counter for brain signal analysis, uh, PCR verification, and the analysis of the cell uh, in brain, respectively. I have published uh, more than 60 uh, peer reviewed papers including 10 JSSC and four t costs and seven ISSC and 11 uh, VSI papers, which are most uh, prestigious venue in the circuit design area. Well, you might not know uh, my school, the UNEST, uh, which is the abbreviation of Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology. Well, it was established in 2009, uh, which means it's a quite young uh, school. And uh, we are uh, focusing on the uh, developing the science and the technology, well, engineering, basically. So we are specialized school uh, and one of the four ISTs, which is the also specialized school uh, for the science and technology in South Korea. So uh, you may wonder uh, where it locates. So let me show you the, the map of the South Korea first. And you may know the capital city in the Seoul here. So this is the Seoul, and the Ulsan is the southeast part from the Seoul. So here is the Ulsan. 
And as, as you can see, uh, it's a quite far away from the Seoul. So distance between them is about 400 kilometer, uh, which is equivalent to the 250 mile. So it takes about four hours by car and two hours by high-speed train and one hour by airplane. Well, this is the uh, uh, panoramic uh, view of my uh, school uh, with uh, six electronic buildings around the pond. Well, my school is uh, small, but strong in the developing the science and technology. And the, uh, the number of faculty and the students are uh, 328 and the 4,762, uh, ending up with the, uh, the ratio of them is about 15, 14.5. Uh, well, we aim to be uh, ranked within the top 10 science and technology universities by uh, 2030. Well, it may sound a little bit bored, but we are now approaching uh, step by step. Well, as you may know, well, several institutes uh, provide a kind of uh, university ranking worldwide, uh, such as the THE or QS or, or Nature Index uh, and the uh, uh, Raiden University. And in the THD ranking, as you can see here, uh, we are uh, ranked uh, first in the, in the South Korea among the young universities and in the 11th in the worldwide. And in the universities, while well, we are ranked uh, uh, five and uh, 178, in the domestic and the international universities. Moreover, in the QS ranking, we are also ranked eight and the 197th uh, in the uh, nationwide and worldwide. So, well, it's still far from the top 10 universities worldwide, but well, we are, as I said, uh, doing, well, approaching uh, step by step. At least I can say that our school, UNIST, is one of the rising stars among the uh, young universities. Well, I administrate my lab, the Bio-Inspired uh, Advanced Sensors Lab. I advise the one postdoc and, and the 12 undergraduate uh, students and three undergraduate students. The main research subject are uh, CMOS uh, TOF sensors for LiDAR system and neural interface circuits and the analog processing in memory or in sensors. Well, this, this photo is uh, taken uh, in the uh, symposium on 3LSI uh, held in the Hawaii this year. And I brought the one postdoc and six uh, PhD candidates at the time. Well, you can uh, visit my website here to uh, know about me uh, further. OK, then. Let's get uh, really started. So uh, this is the outline of uh, this seminar. Uh, I'll start with the motivation of this research. And uh, I'll explain the overall system architecture and the implementation of it. It's followed by uh, proposed SAM array uh, multiplex architecture, AKA the SAM architecture. And after that, after the uh, system analysis and the measurement results are shown, uh, I'll conclude my talk. The brain, uh, as you know, uh, is the most unknown uh, organ in, in our body. So many studies uh, have been well, conducted to explore uh, the brain itself and the brain uh, functions. And there are two main uh, representative motivations like this. So the first motivation is to understand the brain disorders. So many studies are currently constructed, uh, analyze and identify the brain signal in order to diagnose and treat the brain disease, uh, such as uh, Alzheimer and Parkinson's and the epilepsy. And the other uh, motivation is to identify the brain circuits to uh, imitate its extraordinary uh, computational efficiency but ultra low power uh, consumption. Well, two, uh, <clears throat> well, there are two uh, most important uh, research techniques, uh, which is the uh, one is the neural recording and the other one is neuromodulation to control the stimulation. And uh, there are many uh, various type of the techniques here. So among them, uh, I will only focus on the electrical uh, neural recording uh, techniques in this uh, talk. 
Well, let's look at the characteristics of the neuron, uh, which is the key unit uh, cells in the brain. Well, the neuron is the basic uh, unit cell uh, for implementing the various functions, uh, brain functions, and to transmit the signals in the brain. So there are uh, uh, many uh, neurons. Well, actually, the ten is known to the ten to the eleventh neurons, and the ten to the power of uh, fourteen synapses which implies that the brain is extremely uh, complex and it has a, a quite large population. Well, the brain signal can be transmitted from the dendrite here to the soma and the, and the axon by the electrical and the chemical uh, signal format. So let's look at the uh, electric signal generation here. So in the cell membrane, uh, there is a, a, a negative ions uh, inside of the membrane and they are, are distributed in, inside first. So you can see the, uh, the potential inside of the uh, neuron is, is negative now. So once the stimulation or some kind of ex excitation is applied uh, above the certain threshold, then the uh, not, well, sodium, uh, oh, sodium gate is open and the ion uh, is, is transmitted uh, here and there. So ion distribution is inversed. So after that, uh, the potential is getting back to the uh, inner state because the potassium channel is open again. So it's uh, back to the normal. And, and uh, we can see the electrical signal is generated like this, uh, which is called the axon potential or the intracellular uh, potential. So we can measure uh, this uh, electrical signal to understand the brain function uh, through the uh, neural communication. So uh, to understand the uh, uh, brain function, we have to uh, understand, we have to uh, figure out the uh, neural communication from the widely distributed neurons like this. And uh, we also need to uh, well obtain the uh, neural signal to identify the neural, neural uh, characteristics itself. So it brings us to, uh, to implement a large signal uh, neural recording system uh, with a high density electrode for simultaneously recording the electrophysiological signal from the many cells simultaneously. Oops, excuse me. So the electrical, electrophysiological signals can be obtained uh, from two sides. Uh, first one is the intracellular signal uh, picked up the, in the uh, inside of membrane or the extracellular signal uh, from the outside of the membrane. So the patch clamp uh, is the one way to uh, pick up the intracellular signal to penetrate through the membrane. So it can uh, get the very nice uh, high amplitude signal as, as high as uh, uh, several tens of millivolts. So signal quality is good. Uh, however, the problem is the limited scalability. So the patch clamp can be uh, record, can record only one uh, intracellular signal at once. So it is not easy to identify the neural network in the, in the brain. And the other method to uh, capture the extracellular signal uh, through the uh, microelectrode array. While the signal uh, intense, well, amplitude is weakened to the uh, less than maybe uh, available to range, uh, but uh, we can uh, utilize the multi-electrode to uh, record the multiple uh, neural signals uh, at the same time. So we can uh, understand the uh, neural activities comprehensively. So that's why we want to develop the uh, microelectrode array system, uh, aka the MEA system. So I described the uh, specification of the extracellular signal, uh, uh, characteristic specification of the extracellular signals. So neurons typically uh, generate a, a few microvolts to the 100 microvolts uh, of the extracellular signal. And the neural size is, is uh, about uh, a few micrometer to the tens of micrometer. And uh, uh, this extracellular signal uh, uh, appears 
in the 500 hertz to the one, one kilohertz uh, frequency uh, reason. Therefore, uh, it is required to have to develop uh, low noise uh, analog front end, and and that uh, low noise amplifier uh, amplifier should support a high and the uh, temporal uh, high spatial and temporal resolutions to uh, capture uh, the, the neural signal from the uh, discrete neurons. So before uh, we go to the uh, uh, proposed system, uh, let me review some trend of the uh, the in vitro MEA system first. So the extracellular signal recording system uh, has progressed since uh, 1950s. So at the time, the electrode transducer is developed to pick up some uh, neural signals. And in the 1970s, uh, some platforms were developed to receive the multi uh, electrode signal by integrating the integral electrode on the uh, substrate. So uh, the, uh, the electrodes can be integrated on top of the uh, silicon substrate uh, for the in vivo application. Uh, and the, uh, the planar uh, multiple electrodes can be uh, integrated on top of the glass substrate to uh, measure the electrical signal from the uh, cultivated neurons in there. So since uh, the 1980s, uh, the representative measurement uh, platforms have been uh, reported, uh, such as uh, uh, 3D Utah array, illustrated array here with a, a 3D needle and the Michigan probe with the tens of uh, electrodes uh, on top of the uh, probe itself by using the CMOS technology. And these two representative uh, platforms are still uh, used, widely used so far. After the, the, the 2000s, uh, the MA system is, is extended to uh, observe the neural communication uh, from the many neurons. Uh, well, thanks to the uh, advance uh, of the technology, uh, process technology, the size of the electrodes can be shrunk, uh, resulting in the increase of the number of electrodes and spatial resolution and the uh, uh, electrode density. So number of electrodes is increased uh, and it follows to the uh, AFEs, uh, the number of AFE channel is also increased because uh, we have to uh, well record the uh, as many as the electrode uh, through the uh, AFE channel. However, the number of AFE channel cannot be uh, the same as the uh, the number of electrode because as you can see here in this paper, uh, uh, it's published in JSSC 2017. Well. The size of the AFE is much larger than the uh, size of the uh, MEA. Uh, this is because the AFE should support a high performance, like a, a low noise and a high gain. So it occupies a large area. And uh, uh, therefore, the number of AFE channel is much smaller than the, the number of electrode. So therefore, uh, rather than the just scaling, the another, uh, what? Well, functionality like uh, uh, efficient uh, electrode selectivity is, uh, is very uh, crucial to be uh, developed so at, the, at the moment. So let me review a, a couple of uh, prior arts uh, from now on. So the most simplest uh, MEA system is the passive uh, type uh, integrate, uh, passive type electrode array, or right here. So pass uh, electrode array doesn't have the AFE on chip, so it only uh, it, the when the passive electrodes are integrated on chip, so that uh, the spatial resolution should be good. However, uh, all the electrodes should connect it to the uh, off chip AFE, uh, ending up with a very uh, complex uh, routing uh, is required. So uh, it has a limited scalability. So to address this issue, uh, the uh, active pixel sensor containing the in-pixel RNA uh, have been uh, in introduced. So uh, as you can see here, well, all the pixel has uh, its own uh, RNA. 
So uh, we can uh, resolve the uh, complex routing issue here. And you can see the PGA, the problem gain amplifier, and the AD converter are shared in, in each column, which is good. However, it also has a limitation uh, because, the, because of the size of the LNA. So as I told you, the size of the AFV, uh, uh, an alpha front end is quite big, uh, especially that the, the LNA should have should support the low noise uh, capability because so the size of the LNA should be very large. Therefore, the spatial resolution uh, is limited. And another uh, issue of the active pixel sensor is the uh, is that the, the, the electrical scanning is not uh, optimized at all. So AF, uh, APS always scan a whole electrode array uh, fully. Uh, it make the channel overall uh, high. So the large uh, size of the array is, then the, the more channel overall is required. To overcome this channel overload issue, uh, we can just selectively uh, record the significant uh, electrode where the uh, neurons are located, uh, which is uh, represented by the red color here. So in the white color has no uh, neurons, while the uh, significant uh, electrode only uh, has uh, uh, neurons on top of it. Well, uh, when they uh, cultivate the neuron on top of the uh, uh, microelectrode array, uh, they are not evenly distributed. So it, 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 this kind of uh, situation is happen. Therefore, uh, it is very efficient to record only the significant uh, electrode rather than uh, recording whole electrode array. And this is the uh, uh, switch matrix uh, architecture, which is the most uh, representative uh, architecture to record the significant uh, electrode only. It offers the high uh, spatial resolution uh, with the pixel pitch uh, less than the 20 micrometer. And the pixel contains the uh, electrode uh, and the memory and the switch only. There's no uh, RNA inside. So that's why they can realize the small size of the pixel. And they also offer a high temporal resolution uh, of 20 kilo sample per sec to uh, enable uh, the high frequency signal capturing. However, uh, there they has also a limitation uh, because the old electrodes, selected electrodes, significant electrodes should connect uh, to the uh, AFV channel uh, located outside of the array. And uh, it is randomly selected so that uh, the routing complexity is, is quite significant. Well, uh, another problem is the number of uh, the activated uh, recorded electrode is directly limited to the uh, number of AFE channel because they need to be corresponded, uh, corresponding to the, each other. So we introduced the uh, one uh, factor uh, electrode yield, uh, which shows the how many electrodes are activated uh, over the full array, so which is given by the number of elect recorded electrodes versus the total uh, number of electrodes, and the, the the electrode yield of the uh, state of the art switch matrix is less than four percent, which is very small. Well, to address uh, all aforementioned uh, issues, we propose the uh, SAM array uh, multiplexing architecture. The connection uh, complexity is greatly reduced by adopting the column parallel uh, analog front end architecture to share the bus line. The electrode in the column uh, basically read out, read out uh, in a time multiplexing manner. Well, it supports a wide range of the uh, electro selection. Uh, so we can uh, access the half of the uh, electrode we have. So uh, making the electro yield up to the 50%, which is much, much larger than the uh, switch metrics. And it also uh, offers the comparable spatial and the temporal resolutions uh, like this uh, with the uh, switch metrics. So I will explain the how we can uh, achieve such a good uh, performance with, uh, by using this, this proposed architecture uh, later. Okay, let's take a look at the overall MA system first, uh, which consists of uh, 
24,320 uh, electrodes, ranging 200, uh, 128 by 190 uh, array. And it also contained a 380 redox channel, as I said, is a column parallel uh, architecture. And on top of it, uh, we have uh, half of the redox channel and bottom and the other, the other half is located. And there they govern the half of the, the whole uh, electric array by uh, with a six bit row decoder. Well, each pixel uh, has a five, a five by five micrometer TIN electrode in here uh, with a 17.7 micrometer pH pixel. And it also has a, a memory and switch, switches like a switching matrix. And memory is consists of the one deeply plot with the two end gate to select that memory. So uh, there is a column and column line here, uh, column lines here in the, in the in the low line. And when the both lines goes high, then we can select the specific uh, pixels to write uh, some value in the uh, flip flop. But the readout channel uh, is consists of the three stages: the RNA and the promo gain of PGA and the uh, 10 bit uh, SAR ADC. So, the low noise amplifier uh, utilizes the current reused GM boosted uh, telescopic amplifier. Uh, the, the default schematic is, is here. And uh, we configure the, the capacity of negative feedback with the pseudo resistance to set the low frequency pole. Well, the gain is either 10 uh, or 100, and it, it consumes uh, 40.5 microwatt uh, power for uh, achieving the low uh, input noise, less than two micro, microvolt RMS, and offering a high bandwidth of 500 kilohertz to support the time multiplexing uh, feature. The uh, PGA has a two-stage amplifier structure, and it offers a, a variable gain from two to the uh, 20. And we choose the two-stage amplifier because it should offer a large signal uh, swing, output swing, up to the one volt P2P. And it also consumes the 40.5 microwatt to support a bandwidth of about 500 kilohertz. And this is the 10-bit uh, SAR ADC, which is the uh, conventional design. And uh, it operates uh, in the sample rate of 160 uh, kilo sample per sec. Uh, it contains the uh, bootstrap uh, switches to mitigate the non-idealities from the switches. And the uh, CDAP with a unit capacitor of uh, 50 femtofarad and the time domain comparator uh, operating at 10 megahertz frequency. So let's move on to the uh, operating principle of the proposed SAM architecture. Well, this, uh, this slide illustrates the uh, conceptual diagram of the frame rate and the sampling sample rate, uh, which are the main uh, factors to configure our, our chip. The frame rate uh, is the rate at which all the selected electrodes are scanned once through the multiplexing. And while the sample rate is the rate at which the individual uh, electrode is sampled. So, uh, this, excuse me, this is the uh, uh, period of the uh, frame rate, and uh, while this is the uh, period of the sample rate. The sample rate is definitely much smaller than the frame rate. So, um, in this work, we define, uh, we just, uh, uh, we have a dedicated uh, sample rate, which is uh, 160 kilo sample per sec. And this is identical to the uh, ADC uh, sample rate. So uh, we can configure the frame rate actually. And, and uh, another factor, alpha, can be defined, uh, which means the a number of recorded electrodes per frame in a column. So it is given by the ratio of the sample rate uh, to the frame rate. So let me uh, explain this one in detail later more. And the electrode yield, uh, which is shown uh, before, uh, meaning that the number of recorded uh, electrode per the total uh, electrode array is actually given by the alpha uh, 
uh, divided by the 64 electrode in, in this case. So uh, if we uh, set the frame rate to the 2.5 kilo sample per sec, then alpha is set to the 64 automatically because the sample rate is decided to the 160 kilo sample per sec always. And the electrode yield can be 100%. Uh, so uh, we can uh, scan uh, low by low like this. However, uh, as you know, the 2.5 kilo sample per sec is not sufficient to measure the high frequency uh, neural signal. So uh, we can uh, configure uh, frame rate higher, okay? like this. So a frame rate can be 5, 10, 20 kilosampel per sec uh, at the expense of the electrode yield and the uh, alpha. So alpha and electrode yield are inversely proportional to the uh, frame rate. So. Uh, when the frame rate is increased to the 20 kilo sample per sec, then the alpha uh, should be lower down to the A and the electro yield is just 12.5%. Well, definitely uh, such a low uh, alpha or uh, electro yield means the coverage of the whole electro array um, may not be enough to investigate the neural communication in the broad area. So we have to uh, configure this not only the temporal resolution, but the spatial resolution as well. So uh, we can uh, we can uh, uh, make uh, some recomparability of the spatial resolution by uh, grouping the rows in the subarray concept. So that's why we, I, I call this a subarray uh, multiplexing architecture. So there are many uh, uh, well configurability here. So let me explain one by one. So first example here, uh, we can set the subarray with uh, uh, row one. Okay, row so the number of row in the same subarray is represented in the n here. So in this case, we set the uh, frame rate the lowest level is a five kilo sample per sec, and alpha is then set to the thirty two automatically as I said, and and n is now one. So uh, there are thirty two. Uh, a sub arrays basically. So we can we can cover, we can record the 32 uh, lines in this case. Uh, if we increase the frame rate to the 10 kilo sample per sec, then uh, we have to change the n to the two, which means the each sub array has two rows in, in there. So uh, even though the alpha is reduced down to the uh, 16, but uh, we can still cover uh, 32 lows because the one sub array is now uh, operated as a one row uh, in, in, this, in the first example. So we define uh, another, uh, we, we introduce another uh, factor, uh, ENLR, which is the effective number of uh, recorded row, uh, which is given by the production uh, product of the N and the alpha it is uh, maintained to the 32 rows. So even uh, we can uh, have a n of four with the alpha of eight, then with the frame rate of twenty kilo sample per sec, then we can still maintain the effective number of uh, recorded rows. So you may not uh, fully understand still, but uh, well, you can do it uh, in the later explanation I made. So it's such a, a, a recomputable uh, subarray uh, uh, architecture can be. Uh, done by this reconfigurable uh, row decoder. So uh, for simplicity, uh, I'd, I'd like to just introduce the two big case. So uh, this is the first case with the subarray uh, has only one row in, in there. Then the, this reconfigurable row decoder uh, should uh, be identical to the conventional row decoder. So we can just, approach, we can just uh, access uh, one row by uh, rows. Same, okay, same as the conventional one. However, uh, if we set the n of two, uh, which means the subarray has uh, two rows each, then as I said, the subarray is the, uh, regarded as a one row. So we can just select uh, two rows simultaneously. And it can be done by the recomputer row recorder with the switch operation. So as you can see, there is a switch and the switch uh, SW0 signal uh, go high uh, when we set the N2 here. 
to ignore the error speed signal. Uh, although the D0 and D0 bar are complementary signal, but they are uh, all go high uh, due to the uh, SW1's switch operation. So uh, that's why we can select uh, both loads simultaneously. But definitely, it can uh, uh, it has a problem to conflict the signal because the column line is shared by two electrodes. And we, if we turn on the two lines simultaneously, then, then two signals are conflict, uh, which is should be avoided. And uh, this, uh, we, we can avoid it uh, by using the in pixel uh, memory. So uh, as I told you, uh, all the pixel has uh, in pixel memory, and we can uh, configure that uh, value. So we can just select a significant uh, electrode, and, and actually, uh, one of the two uh, rows, two electrodes in each column are selected uh, by using the in pixel memory configuration. Then, uh, even though we select the two, oh, excuse me, it's not, it doesn't work. Well, let me just use the laser point here. Okay. So, uh, one of two, uh, one of two electrodes are only selected. So uh, there's no confliction at all. And this significant uh, uh, electrode are selected uh, depending, depending on the uh, neural loca location, basically. Okay. And this, uh, uh, the selection uh, of the memory writing, basically, is, is uh, provided by the off-chip template. So we can write, we can make an off-chip template and then uh, write directly to the our chip and uh, it is configured. So let me show you uh, more examples here. So uh, in the first case, uh, we said we can configure the frame rate to the 20 kilo sample per sec, and n is one, uh, which means that the uh, effective number uh, recorded row is only eight uh, rows, which, is, which means the coverage of the whole array is small. So sometimes we can do it uh, to uh, record some densely uh, located neuron in the local area. And even when we can uh, well, uh, read the rows, the discontinuously. And the other case is that we can set the uh, frame rate to the 10 kilo sample per sec and, uh, uh, and to the four, then we can cover, uh, we can make uh, E and L out the 64 rows, which is the maximum in, in our case uh, like this. Then we can uh, capture, we can just uh, spend uh, the coverage to the whole array. And uh, definitely the, uh, the number of electrodes selected in the subarray is, is quite few, but uh, sometimes it can, uh, well, enough to uh, measure the neural communications. And in this work, we actually uh, implement a six bit recomputable row decoder. So uh, if the uh, subarray has one row, then the decoder operation is identical to the conventional one. While uh, it has a, a two, four, five, eight rows in the subarray, then uh, the RSB and second RSB and third RSB are ignored by switching operation to select the uh, multiple loads simultaneously. So we set the uh, sample rate, uh, dedicated sample rate to the 160 kilo samples per sec. And then uh, the frame rate can be controlled from the 2.5 to the 160 kilo sample per sec. Accordingly, the subarray can also be adjusted from the one and one to the 64 rows. However, this is a theoretical limitation. So we, we wanna uh, make uh, some constraint to set the frame rate and the subarray uh, to uh, realistic uh, measurement in the in vitro. So we, we only set to uh, frame rate from five to the 20 kilo sample per sec uh, and corresponding alpha and the electrode yield should be 32 and 50% to the eight and the 12.5%. And the subarray also uh, can be set to the one, two, four and eight rows only because uh, more than eight rows uh, give us a low measurement efficiency due to the unacceptably sparse uh, spatial resolution. So uh, this is the uh, uh, what uh, favorable uh, configuration of our chip. 
And let me show you two same uh, configuration scenarios uh, according to the distribution of the uh, neurons. So uh, initially, we have to scan a whole array to define where the uh, neuron locates. So we don't know where the neuron locates exactly. So uh, initially, we have to scan it first. So uh, this the case, for case one uh, shows the initial initial uh, scanning case. So we can just set the lowest frame rate because we don't want to uh, see exact uh, neural uh, signals in this case. So we can just set the lowest one and subarray with a low uh, one low only and to scan uh, fully. After that, we can define the uh, we, can, we now know that. The upper uh, MEA has no uh, neurons, while the bottom side has a large neuron uh, population. So uh, we can move to the case two to uh, catch the high frequency synaptic uh, signal in the local area. So in this case, we can just set the uh, high frame rate to the 10 kilo sample per sec, and the sub rate is still uh, remain to one row to uh, get the signal from in this area only. And the other uh, scenario uh, is shown here. So now the neurons are distributed in the uh, uh, quite the uh, broad area. Then we can set the uh, frame rate to the 10 or 20 even, and the sub rate to the one, two row or the four row, even eight rows. Then uh, we can capture the, all the uh, significant electro signal only. So as you can see, the case four, there are many insignificant uh, uh, electrodes. So we can just set the uh, subarray sparsely to cover uh, to to increase the coverage to make sure the we can capture the high frequency synaptic signal in the global area. All right, then uh, let me uh, switch my gear to analyze the proposed system. So this is the uh, process of the signal acquisition example. So uh, let us assume that we have uh, just four by four uh, MEA and with the uh, two uh, sub array with the uh, two rows. And I focus on the fourth uh, column here and we have a uh, two sub array. So uh, two electrodes are selected and they are sequentially uh, read out by uh, analog front end. But well, actually, their electrodes are uh, sequentially uh, connected to the analog front end. And, and you can see that uh, blue uh, line has a large uh, amplitude, while the red has a, a small amplitude, and they are uh, multiplexed to represent the uh, uh, black line up here. So uh, AFE will uh, amplify the signal and the digitized and transmit to the off chip. And and the, uh, this multiplex signal can be uh, retrieved uh, the original signal by uh, simple demultiplexing operation. However, we can encounter two uh, issues uh, by uh, because of the uh, switching operation. Well, uh, the first issue uh, stems from the electrode uh, DC offset, which is the EDO here. So it is well known uh, that the electrode has a, a DC offset as large as uh, several tens of millivolt, which is a much, much larger than the neural signal. And uh, when we uh, multiplex the electrode, that signal is up modulated and, and, and uh, blended to the, our signal. And uh, it even uh, saturates the amplifier to distort our signal uh, measurement. And another issue is the noise folding uh, by the switching operation. The sense noise bandwidth here of the switch is much larger than the uh, signal uh, frequency, sampling frequency. The out of band noise here is uh, folding back, uh, folded back to the signal band by uh, due to the aliasing. So the discrete time uh, sampling uh, uh, circuit always suffer from the KT over C noise. So let me uh, show you a little bit more uh, details in, in this one later. And before we uh, uh, move on to the next slide, I would like to uh, show you uh, the, the experimental uh, environment. So all uh, MEA array are exposed to the uh, PBS solution of which a reference is provided by an AG electrode and the external uh, reference bias. 
and we use the render circuit model to uh, modeling the uh, electrode here. So render circuit model has three uh, task components, uh, RS, uh, CCT, and RCT. Well, RS is simple. Uh, this is the solution uh, resistance. And uh, CCT is the double layer capacitance uh, formed in the interface between the electrolyte and the electrode. Uh, RCT is the Faraday uh, resistance, uh, which is generated by the uh, redox uh, reaction in the interface. Well, uh, <clears throat> well in this, uh, uh, well, usually the electrode offset is uh, uh, generated because uh, the, the surface impedance of the electrodes are different from each other, and the local uh, potential of the solution is different from each other. Well, this decoupling capacitor well, here in the typical uh, uh, neural recording ICs can uh, easily remove uh, this uh, DC uh, offset. But in our case, as I told you, uh, we are selecting the electrode uh, sequentially, which means that uh, this all the different offset can be unmodulated to the signal bandwidth. The several studies are conducted to remove the electrode DC offset uh, in, in, in previous uh, literature. So they utilize the off-chip off uh, memory to store the electrode offset. And, and compensate for uh, the, the offset by subtract uh, the value from the off-chip uh, memory. But this is not uh, desirable to our, for our, our system because our system has a large uh, electrode array. So we need an uh, unacceptably large uh, memory size for uh, adopting this uh, approach. Rather than using the uh, opt memory, uh, we employ just an auto drawing scheme to eliminate the uh, offset by using the double layer capacitance. Well, since our system doesn't have any redox uh, reaction in the interface uh, of the electrode, so uh, RCT uh, should be large enough uh, to be negligible in the parallel connection. Then the electrode can be just modeled uh, as a pure capacitor. Well, the previous researcher uh, here and there, uh, they also showed the similar uh, approach. So when the uh, potential of the both side of the electrode are the same uh, in this here, then as you can see, the RCT is, uh, goes almost infinite as we expect. And the other uh, researcher uh, compensate the uh, offset by uh, applying the same potential to the electrode. And the electrolyte. So we uh, uh, this method is doable and favorable favorable for our system, and we employ the same uh, technique. So as you can see here, uh, we have a reference uh, external reference potential to the uh, uh, applied to the reference as well as the uh, inside of the chip for uh, grabbing the uh, the other part other side of the electrode. So other side of the CCT double layer capacitance uh, potential to make sure they, they are uh, equal by using the switch here. So initially, all the switches are turned on to uh, apply the same uh, reference potential to the uh, double layer capacitance. Then the double layer capacitance can uh, store the DC offset of the each uh, electrode. So uh, we can achieve the uh, auto during uh, feature without any uh, area or power uh, burden here. And the second issue is the noise folding. So as I told you, the switching, uh, uh, the switch uh, thermal noise uh, can be folded back uh, by the aliasing effect. But this effect may not be uh, critical uh, to our system. Uh, that's the, that, that this is because uh, even though uh, the, the noise, the amount of noise is, is dependent on the KT over C, uh, well, which is the solely uh, rely on the capacitor size. So uh, there is only the, the, the is only way to lower down the KT, KT over C noise is 
they have the uh, increasing the capacitor size, but it's not uh, uh, favorable for our, our system because we have a large uh, uh, number of channels in there. But uh, we realized that the power spectral density of the KT over C noise is, uh, is lower than the conventional uh, neural recording system because we use the uh, uh, high, higher sampling frequency than the conventional one due to the uh, time multiplexing manner. <clears throat> So as you can see, uh, although the, uh, the size of the total uh, noise are the same, but the power spectral density is lower. And uh, actually this uh, sampling frequency is much higher than uh, the frequency of interest uh, from the 300 to the 10 kilohertz, right? The neural signal is, is should be appeared in this range. So, uh, after recording, we can uh, apply the band pass filter to attenuate the uh, noise bandwidth. So this is the noise bandwidth, and this is zoomed in uh, figure. So we can just pick up the uh, noise from 300 to the, uh, 10 kilohertz by applying the band pass filter. Then theoretically, we can reduce the uh, thermal noise power by about, uh, about eight times, which is supported uh, by the measurement result. Let me show you later. Okay, well, this is the uh, chip microphotograph uh, fabricated in a 110 nanometer CMOS. The chip size is uh, 5.424 millimeter by 5.9 millimeter, uh, which limit the uh, number of electrodes and the number of AFE channels. So uh, it occupies the uh, 128 by 190 MEA uh, with the uh, 190 uh, readout channels on top and the bottom of the array. And all the operation is, uh, uh, is done, by, done in the 1.5 volt supply. Uh, after packaging, a PDMS wall here and the apox treatment are, were built for in vitro uh, experiment. But well, this uh, slide shows the performances of the analog front end channel. So the frequency response uh, shows uh, the program of gain from 26 to the 66 dB clearly. And the high frequency pole is above the 500 kilohertz uh, as expected. Uh, we cannot measure e exact uh, high frequency pole because our equipment maximum frequency it doesn't support uh, more than 500 kilohertz. And the input level noise uh, with and without uh, multiplexing of the eight electrodes are uh, 5.4 microvolt RMS and the 1.48 microvolt RMS respectively. And as I told you, uh, even though we had the multiplexing increased the uh, input level noise by aliasing with the folding back effect, but still small enough uh, to measure the, the neural signal because of the uh, noise attenuation, as I explained before. So let's look at the pre-recorded uh, spike measurement result uh, to verify the system uh, functionality. So we configure, in this case, uh, uh, the frame rate uh, of five kilo sample per sec and the uh, subarray uh, set to the two rows. And the memory uh, is uh, showed the uh, uh, the letter of 2022 IASSCC because we just want to present it to the uh, this year ICC. Are the numbers look like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all the uh, electrode has the same uh, spike waveforms because we just used the uh, one uh, pre-recorded spike to the whole electrode array, and and uh, and we just uh, we pick up the uh, this heat map in this time uh, line. So you can see clearly the letter uh, written by the memory. And uh, in the zoom in uh, waveform, you can see uh, also the waveform itself clearly from the nine electrodes. And let me uh, uh, bring the, uh, well, here I bring the uh, two uh, in vitro measurement results. So first one is uh, show the, uh, time variant propagation signal by neural communication uh, in, a, in every uh, 0.3 millisecond. 
So uh, is it is very clearly shown that the the action potential is is propagated in in, in this way in the in the local area. So in this case, we set the frame rate to the ten kilosamples per sec and the subarray of one row to uh, get the exact signal uh, propagation. And the other uh, in vitro measurement results show the broad range of the uh, electrode array. So uh, you can see the uh, newer uh, activities from the uh, uh, in the global area, and we set the subarray to the eight lows and frame rate to the twenty kilo sample per sec. So we can explore the extracellular potential of the distributed neural neuronal uh, synapses in here. And interestingly, as you can see in the fluorescence image, uh, which is which shows the good agreement with the electrical signal measurement. Yeah. So this is the uh, performance comparison, uh, and our prototype chip uh, shows the comparable uh, performances uh, in terms of the active area, uh, pixel pitch, electrode density, and the number of electrodes. And the uh, uh, the electrode yield. Is, is, is the maximized up to the uh, 50% in our prototype chip, while uh, the number of uh, recording channel is the uh, smallest among the state-of-the-art uh, MEA chips. So let me conclude my talk. Well, I, I present in vitro neural recording MEA system uh, investigating a single neuron and the neural synapse effectively. Uh, it has uh, 24,320 uh, electrodes and 380 reader channel with a 70.7 micro pitch. Uh, and it mitigates the uh, routing complexity and the uh, number of channel using time multiplexing scheme. The recomputable subarray uh, multiplexing architecture can maximize the electrode yield while uh, reducing the number of channels. And it, uh, and, uh, it uh, provides a high flexibility and the scalability, uh, extending the microelectro array system for a uh, various application. Okay, well, thank you for your attention, and uh, we can continue the Q and A session maybe after this seminar. So we need maybe to end here. Some, <laughs> um, some quick questions, uh, whether here in the room or. Uh, over Zoom. Uh, over Zoom, you can just raise your voice. Uh, or, uh, oh, yes, Shadi, please, questions. Hey, thank you for the talk. Would the reconfigurable architecture be compatible with simulation if you want to deliver simulation? Uh, yes, very good question. Well, our next goal is to integrate the stimulation function here. So in this chip doesn't have any stimulation function. So that that's why we need to scan whole array uh, every time to uh, define the location of the neuron. And sometimes the neurons cannot generate any signal. So it's uh, very hard to analyze the neuronal communication. So it is very uh, good to integrate the stimulation function. Then we can just stimulate the, uh, the neuron. Then we can clearly see the neural signal propagation. So that's the another uh, next goal uh, to this project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, question from the fly on the wall in Bebenhausen. Um, some circuit details. Uh, now, uh, now um, first of all, um, you have uh, you have these differential amplifiers, kind of uh, complement complementary uh, cast coded amplifiers. Um, how do you uh, where do you tap the uh, where where do you where do you generate the common mode uh, tap for the common mode feedback? Oh, yeah, that's also a very good uh, question. Well, that's the most technical one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, so, uh, where does, yeah. Okay. So, how does the common word feedback work here? Well, uh, as you can see here, well, the even though we uh, employ the fully differential architecture, but the, uh, the other uh, input is not uh, from the uh, electrode, but it's just a uh, tight uh, reference voltage. So it's kind of a well, pseudo reference, well, pseudo fully reference, uh, it's good, fully uh, uh, differential architecture. And uh, uh, well, the CMFP here, 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so how do you get how do you get from the VC? So I believe well, I, I I haven't designed this one uh, myself by myself. So my student, uh, so I cannot exactly explain. But I believe that uh, uh, there is a uh, some circuit to generate this uh, CMFV here. I I believe so. It is not oh, no. yes. It is not uh, appeared in this slide. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we can just pick up the uh, two uh, differential output and then generate the uh, the CMFV by using okay. the amplifier or some some passive network. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. Source uh, circuits journal paper, right? Yes, yes, yes. So okay. you can. Well, uh, we we pre, we published it recently. The T bio cost well may, may be appeared in the December uh, this year. So I I believe the CMFV circuit is is uh, included in that journal. So you can you can look at it. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, if nobody else asks, I have I'd have some more technical circuit design questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, you're you're saying that you're establishing you're you're uh, basically putting an offset voltage onto the uh, input double input capacitance uh, at the at your uh, at your uh, at your at your electrodes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question uh, is, I mean, I, this is this is an this is an idea that I like. But yeah. the question is, as as you are as you are establishing this offset voltage, are you are you gener are you generating a stimulus there, so, uh, just by just as an artifact? And uh, uh, would that be harmless that stimulus? I mean, what you're doing is if you're hmm. once. You if if you're establishing the charge on this um, R zero to R K node, mm. uh, then you um, then you are coupling charge back into the back into the uh, into the wet into the wet stuff into the neurons. Uh, how do they respond to that? Do they respond to that at all, or do they ignore it? Well, uh, this is also a very good question, and unfortunately i cannot uh, answer correctly because i as i said i didn't well measure this system by myself so uh well it's, it's well maybe i can also expect uh, some artifacts may be generated when we uh, initialize the whole the electrode array uh, but i didn't uh, get any reports from uh, my students about their point so well Sorry, I cannot uh, answer. Yeah. So, um, if the technique works, mm -hmm. it shouldn't uh, the feedback be exactly zero because mm -hmm. all the, um, I mean, the also it gets canceled uh, um, input effort, right? Yeah. Well, uh, so this is not exactly the stimulation to the electrode. We just set the uh, electrode potential to the uh, known voltage level so it's quite different from the stimulation operation so uh, but it's, it looks like the stimulation so uh, i'm not really uh, sure about it well let, let me well i and i didn't really uh, think about that point before yeah i mean the, i mean the thing is the thing is i mean it's, it's, it's a, a dedicated stimulus would look quite different from what you're yeah, doing yeah. there but what you are doing there is you you are adding a charge to this R yeah, yeah, yes, R array yes. node, uh -huh. and that charge uh, goes somewhere, and that and a part of that charge goes through the C uh, through through the CCT. Mm -hmm. So you're you're put by by adjusting your offset, you're initially putting some some charge, and that yeah, is stimulus yep. into the into the tissue. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Should yeah, be yeah, harmless, yeah. but uh, it's an it's an it's an interesting detail. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's an interesting question. Yeah, and and a very good question. So yeah, that's great. So any more questions from the audience or uh, Zoom? If not, thank you very much. I I, I even I, I even have one more. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so um, I think you had a uh, you had a two stage amplifier from the uh, from this from the sensor electrodes to the bus lines, mm -hmm. but uh, what would it take that um, if you are I mean what you're doing there is with this with this internal memory you're either you're switching electrodes on and off, and uh, what you want to do is you want only you want right now you want only one electrode on at the time. 
So um, what would it, uh, how, how difficult would it be that you have a mode where you just uh, switch, uh, switch on several bits for the, uh, on the bus line and then you get just the average signal from, from the electrodes? Well, we didn't do it. Well, uh, it means that we can turn on the uh, multiple electrodes simultaneously to get the aggregated signal from the multiple yes. electrodes, right? So, well, that's the, well, we just call that one as a signal complexion. So, well, it might not uh, average the signal, but the, it may be a winner take all kind of things. So mm. only we can get the strong sig stronger signal than the others. There are um, passive electrodes. So in principle, let's say the neuron hmm. is just um, straddled between two electrodes. Yeah. So selecting both of them mm -hmm. would allow still to pick up that signal mm -hmm. uh, as it uh, travels between two electrodes. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, yeah. Okay. So, but but what 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 you're saying is that uh, what would what would be a a uh, what would be a linear addition at the at the input. Yeah. Uh, after after your amplifier stage stages, it's no longer linear addition; it's a winner take all. So that's 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 a mm. that is a uh, com com completely convincing explanation why you won't why do why you don't want to do it. Well, uh, actually, we want to just uh, uh, collect the neural signal from uh, a single electrode with uh, uh, with uh, many electrodes at the same time. So that's the our uh, goal to achieve this uh, system. So uh, the signals from the multiple electrodes, uh, well, averaging is not well, well favorable. I, I think because we, we want to look at the signal propagation or the just a, well, so basically signal propagation from the neuron to the another neuron. So that's why we develop such a, a multiple electrode array. And and your suggestion of the electrode uh, well, neural signal pickup aggregating neural signal uh, gathering is not well uh, appropriate for our system. I, I think so. Yeah. We could probably take this offline, but uh, yeah, 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 it's an issue of spatial aliasing and, and yes, how, yeah, but, yeah. But with passive electrodes, uh, mm -hmm. it probably is okay. But so there's something we can. Mm -hmm. I think offline. So thanks, mm -hmm. Christopher, for the question. Yeah, thanks for your question. Well, yeah, it's yeah. very good. Okay. Again, thanks very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, thank you.